morning, artists. It's so good to see you all. Okay, that's a joke because I can't see you, but you can see us. Um, today, we are going to be making superhero names. Now, I call it superhero because I don't know. It kind of looks like something out of a comic. Yeah, like Superman would do. Uh, to do this, we are going to be employing one point perspective. Have you ever done that before? I have a couple times. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it won't be so bad. <laughs> It, it, yeah, it can be tricky, so if this is the first time you're doing this, we will go slow, we will do this step by step, we will start in pencil, okay, before outlining in a pen, sharpie, or pen, pen marker. small thing, <laughs> um, because pencil can erase easily. And I've got another example here that is um, like a challenge almost, a two-point perspective, if you think that this is maybe too easy and you want to try doing this, see if you can figure out how to employ our vanishing points, and we'll talk about mm. that, um, to something like this. No, it's just angled differently. That's really the only difference. All right, so to get started, I'm going to do, I'm going to do Nick's name over here because he's got a cool name. Um, you can do whatever name you want, I guess, if you wanted to make it for your sister or brother. And we are going to we are going to write our name very very lightly, just normal, okay? And this is so that we could space out where we want our letters. So regular N, regular I, regular C, and just a regular K. And pro tip, if you start from the middle of your name, you can kind of see where about the middle of the paper is and just write out from there. That's a really good tip. Yeah, sometimes when I'm writing, I'll get through my name and as I get to the edge, I've got all these letters left over and I can't squeeze them all in and then I have to start over. But I don't know if, um, can we see the, the pencil line there? Is it showing up? I think so, yeah. Okay, it, it may be hard to see, but I've just got an N, I, C, K. I've got them kind of jumbled. You'll notice in this example, it's straight across. Yeah, I'm writing mine kind of like squat at the top of the paper. We'll see what that does to the vanishing lines yeah, later. That would be kind of <laughs> cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, if you like what you have, you can move on to the next step. If you don't, this is a great opportunity to maybe scoot something over. Like I'm looking at this I right here and it looks like it's really close to the end. Erase and scooch it over. Now we are writing very, very, very lightly, right? Yep. You might not even be able to see it too well depending on your screen. Yeah. Um, I like to call it ghost writing. That Ooh. way it's easy to erase and it, it's a little tricky at first. It takes some getting used to but if you can learn how to write very, very lightly, that will help you in pretty much any drawing you do. Yeah, sketching, kind of having an underlayer to things is important for if you want to make things look realistic later. Yeah, and you could, you could change things too. Okay, the next step is we are going to turn our regular letters into blocky letters or bubble letters. Um, I'm just going to do blocky letters because they have corners. So if you look here, all my letters here have a corner, right? Like a, a 90 degree angle or maybe a more acute angle. Those corners will be nice for having that point to bring back to this point. If you do a bubble letter, you can still, you can still manage. It will still work, but this may be a little simpler if you have if you have like a straight edge and straight corners. You can even do that with your round letters, just kind of making a little bit more corners that way. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right, and I'm going very slow here. Ghost writing. How's your ghost writing? <laughs> I feel like that means something else. <laughs> yeah, I think it does. Isn't that when um, someone else, else writes, writes your... speech? Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should say ghost drawing, hmm. although it's still us doing it. All right, I've got an N. It's totally not perfect, but I think I'll keep it. Let's see this I, very skinny letter. I'm going to fatten up my I just a little bit, and then I'll show you guys. We'll see what we can see on the camera. 
All right. How is that? Can we see that? Yeah. Awesome. They're I like not perfect, but. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just like to use the original line of the letter as kind of like maybe one of the lines in the bubble letter, too. It goes pretty fast that way. Sometimes you might need to like draw around it. Mine is also not even on the page, so. <laughs> that is a good, I do that too sometimes. And as long as you're drawing lightly, you know, it's all fine because you can just erase what you don't like. Every single time I draw or even paint, I end up erasing or removing part of it. You know, the first thing I draw is never the final thing. Oh, now we got a K. K's are hard. It's the hardest one. And when I did that for my sister, Kaylin, oh, that was really hard. I had to erase a lot for that one. Hmm. It's interesting how uh, people with like shorter names might wind up having more of their like bigger letters on the page and smaller might shrink to you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's going to be two completely different compositions. And like you're doing, you're writing Nick like kind of spaced out like that, and I just did mine across the top of the page. So that's something to think about too. You can totally move around the letters as you want. It doesn't matter where you put them. Yeah, that's a good idea. You can do it like an arc maybe. You know, put your letters in a semicircle. I bet you could kind of arrange letters totally randomly on the page too and it would still work. It might be a little bit funky with legibility, but... I like that. That is a good way to make it more abstract, you know, taking a letter and using it as more of a design or a pattern. You'll still get that spatial effect of something zooming out at you, but it might be more, yeah, like illegible. That'd be really cool. All right, do you have your, your letters pretty much how you want them? Ah, uh, just more or less. More or less. I like that. We are going to make a dot. That will be our vanishing point. And we call it a vanishing point because every line that we make now will vanish into this dot. We're going to make that at the bottom of our paper and in the middle, okay? In the center bottom of your paper. So right at the very tip of my finger, that is where we're making our dot. Something like there-ish. Very <laughs> nice. Now you will need a ruler. Probably should have said that at the beginning. If you don't have a ruler though, you can use something that has a flat edge. So if you've got a Crayola box, you can use a flat edge there. Another piece of paper. Right, if, especially if you fold it. Mm. Okay, when you have your dot, it is better, a little easier, if your dot is small and kind of teeny tiny, just big enough so you can see it. If you got a big dot, some of your lines may be going to this side of it, some of them may be going to this side of it, so it's nicer when you have a nice small dot. Okay, um, I think... Before we start our vanishing lines, I kind of want to add something extra, maybe like a shape or something. Ooh, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, in this one, we don't have any floating shapes or extras, but I think I'm going to put some, maybe some down here. Nick, what, what should I put down there for your name? Hmm, how about um, a really cool star? I like stars. Ooh. Ooh, that would be cool. That would fit with the superhero theme. Yeah, it would. All right, I'm going to make my five-pointed star, and I'm making it kind of see-through. I can use my eraser to get rid of the center lines. This is a, a very light drawing. Morgan, are you adding anything? You know, I think I might add a couple of hearts just for fun. Ooh, that's a good idea. Make another star. How's two stars, Nick? Do you want three or two? Three. Three? Okay, let's make another one way up here. <laughs> I made one of my hearts pretty close to the vanishing point, so we'll see how that turns out in the end. Ooh. Yeah, that's really cool. 
I sometimes think, like, what would my superpower be? And I haven't come to a conclusion <laughs> on that yet. Do you have any ideas? Hmm. I would think maybe something with seeing or, like, observation. Ooh, you know? That would be really cool. Yeah. Mine would be confusion, but I wouldn't do it <laughs> other people. I would just confuse myself. Oh, I, th That's I, think, a good one. I think I have that one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We all do sometimes. I think okay. talking to animals would be cool. Oh, that would be. <gasps> that would be awesome. I would love to know what my cats would ever think. Okay. I've got three big stars. I think we are ready to start with our vanishing points. Now, the actual funny term that we call these lines that recede into a vanishing point is called an orthogonal. But that's Ooh. a funny word, so we don't need to use that word. <laughs> I'm going to start with the shape closest towards the bottom of my paper. So I'm putting my finger on this star down here, under the N. What shape do you have closest to the bottom of your paper? I have a little heart thing. It's a smaller one, but we can make it work. All right. So I'm going to line up a ruler to one point on that shape and the other one to the vanishing point. So Morgan, you'll probably do the, the very top yeah. and then the very bottom. Yep. Now when I draw a line, I always open my hand. Okay, this is the hardest part, especially if you don't use a ruler that often. You might want to hold it here and then when you go to draw, your ruler wobbles on you. So I like to line it up, use my eyeballs, use my eyeballs, double check, double check. It needs to meet to those points, right? It's meeting up perfectly with the star corner and it's meeting up with my vanishing point, okay? Now we can draw a line. So you will do that for each corner so I'm doing the other bottom one here and I'll do this side one here. And then we'll talk about what happens when your line bumps into itself or another shape. So if we look at this, this point here in the star, we will draw a line here. But if the line goes behind the star, we don't draw it, okay? And sometimes if you draw lightly, you can decide like, oh, that looks kind of funny. Mm -hmm. I don't think I should have that line. But I'm going to see. Yeah, sometimes you might have to make decisions, especially if you have rounder shapes where there isn't a clear corner. It might be a little bit harder to figure out where to put the thing. Yeah, especially if you're doing those rounded bubble letters. You'll have to just find, the, find a point to use. You guys will have to share your art this time. I'm really interested oh, in know. seeing it. Yeah, especially if you do this 2.1. Yeah, I want to see what you guys add around your names. So you can see on this point of the star, you can't really see it. So I didn't really draw it. I just, it's just the edge of that star. It's going behind the star, so you don't see it. Now I'm going to see if I can see the top of the star. And I think we will. So let's line it up line it up and oh it bumps into the bottom one do you see how that bumps into this bottom part of it the top the line is going and then it stops when it hits the little wing part okay you will need to stop your line or orthogonal whenever it hits another shape okay that is why we are starting with our lowest shapes of on the paper and we are going upward okay my next one is either this eye or that star so i can pick which one i'm going to do the eye line up the corner line up the point double test open the hand so it don't move on me and draw I kind of did pick the wrong project to grab pencil without an eraser, but oh. the bright side is by the time I have an eraser. Thank you. <laughs> by the time you color it, though, you might not even be able to see if you make a small mistake. So. Oh, that's so true. So, so true. And you can notice now what is starting to happen. We're starting to get all of our lines disappearing into our vanishing points. 
Now, what I did here, I just took like a bottle cap from something I was drinking and I traced a semicircle and erased the lines in the middle. I thought that looked kind of cool. So you can do something like that if you want. Um, if you don't like everything just going to one point. But that's the only difference there. All right, now we'll do our other star. And it's really important that you line up both points because I see a lot of times students will line one up and then when they go to the vanishing point to line your ruler up to that, they accidentally nudge the ruler so now they have to go back and reline it. So you got to make sure they're both lined up before drawing your line. Now I also want to show how in this star I drew a line from the bottom two corners. I also need to draw a line from this center here. Okay? So I'm going to draw that line because that is also a corner even though it is an inside corner. So let me show you that. See, I drew a line from that inside corner. Now I probably won't have a line from this corner or this corner because they're going through my shape. We don't want orthogonals. We don't want our diagonal lines going through our shapes. And it can be a little bit tricky making those decisions. Yes, it can. I made two mistakes in this one when I was doing that. I had to go back in when I thought I was done and I thought, nope, I forgot one. Yeah, I'm kind of making mistakes all over the place here, but I'm going to have to correct. But mm -hmm. again, like with color and things, it won't matter that much. And the important part with any project that you're doing is to have fun, learn something from it, but also do what you like. Yeah. Sometimes mistakes look cooler than what you were planning. It's all those happy accidents, right? <laughs> Gosh, if you guys have not watched Bob Ross videos, <laughs> that's your homework from Side Street, is to go enjoy those at He's some point. He's so <laughs> relaxing to watch. He really does love painting. He just loves mixing the colors. Oh, I could watch him all day. <laughs> All right, moving up my page. Now I'm on the N. Oh, the N has lots of little corners. Okay. Now the N, I think I'm going to be hitting my star. So if I do, I have to stop drawing. That one did not. But I think this corner here when i make my line it's probably going to bump into the star and i need to make it stop then because the star is in front of this n so line, i still gotta line it up though line up the vanishing point line up the corner double check double check open the hand and wow i'm not actually hitting the star <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, look at that. It got really close, but it didn't hit the star, so I was actually able to keep going. I thought for sure I would hit the star. Okay, but I didn't, so I kept going. I think I might bump into the eye this time, though. Okay, top of my end corner, line it up. Line it up to the vanishing point. Draw, and then stop. I am stopping where I've hit the eye. So there's, I drew this line here, and I stopped when I hit that shape, and then I was done. Okay? Unless your letters are made out of glass. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a cool one. Glass and water are, like, difficult to master, so that's always... That would be really... Like, what if you had bubble letters that were actual bubbles? Or challenge. <laughs> Extra yeah. challenge. <laughs> and it might not be that tricky. You just got to make the highlights. You know, I think bubbles have a lot of uh, like color around the edges. They're not just one color. That would be a cool challenge. Wow, that didn't hit anything either. <laughs> My lines are just missing each other. That's good. Okay, I'm on a curvy one now. How did you do your O? 
I made my O with corners, so you might be able to see it. Instead of doing a round O, I made corners where it would curve. That's a good idea. I wonder if I should do that to my C. How would we do it if we didn't have corners? I'm going to line up my vanishing point, my ruler, my vanishing point, and I'm going to move my ruler up until it very, the very, very, very first time it hits the C. That is the very first time that it hit that C, so that is where I will draw my line. So I drew a line from right there. Okay? Then I will move my ruler more. I can do these because those are corners, so those are easy to see. So let's just go ahead and do those corners. Line up my ruler, line up my corners. Oh, and I just missed that star too, so I was able to go all the way down. So now the bottom of my C is finished. That curve, we're going to leave that curve alone. And if you want to get real fancy, you can shade in that curve so that it goes from dark to light. Then it makes it look Ooh. like it's really curving in space. Nick, thanks for letting me use your name. Oh, no problem. I let people use my name all the time. <laughs> can I borrow it? Sure. OK, cool, guys. I'm Nick today. <laughs> hey, Nick. <laughs> I wonder if we should call you Morgan? I'm OK with that. <laughs> OK, that's only fair. We can all be Nick. Ooh. All right. My C looks kind of funny. I wonder if I did it right. What do you think, Nick? Mm. <laughs> Maybe not at the top. Right, so what should I do at the top? Let's see. Maybe if I bring this edge over more? It just looks awkward. I'll come back to it. I'll keep going. I'll look at it, I'll think about it, and then I'll make a change if I want to change it. Okay, last letter. It's the tricky one. I'm on the K. Uh-oh. Oh, and I hit a star, so then I stop. There you mm -hmm. go, made it nice and easy. <laughs> yeah, I should just cover it with lots of stars. <laughs> okay, there's the other corner. It does get harder as you get more lines to sort of see what's going on. It does. I, I remember thinking that too. What I had to do when I was doing my name Natalie here, because I got seven letters in my name, that was a lot of lines. Mm -hmm. Every now and then I had to go like this. I had to hold it away from me just to sort of get an overall view of what am I even doing? Just to make sure it still makes sense. I wonder how many lines I have on my paper. How many do you think you have? Oh gosh, I don't know. Dozens at least. <laughs> yeah. It depends on if you count when I was like doing the little <laughs> sketches around the letters. True, yeah. If we counted all our mistake lines, it'd probably be like a hundred. Oh boy. Oh yeah. I think I might be finished with Nick's name. Yep. I think I'm close enough with mine. I probably could work on getting it a little bit more perfect, but I'm not too concerned because when we add color, it's going to be oh, yeah. nice and bright. Oh, totally. Yeah, this is a good time now, while everything is still in pencil, to just look over your name for a little bit and see if you forgot anything. When I did that with this example, there was a couple of things I forgot. I had to go back and and get them in. So I'm just looking. I think I've got every corner. I like the stars. It's not perfect, but I don't think art should be because then it just looks weird. It would be really hard to yeah. try and make everything perfect. I know. I mean, no one ever is perfect, so if you try to look perfect, it looks weird. Okay. If you are happy with your pencil, with your pencil lines and everything you have here, you can start outlining with a marker or a pen or something harder and darker. Um, if you wanted to spruce up down here where all that, all the lines sort of go into the vanishing point, now is a good time to do that. Um, I wonder if I'm going to, what hmm. do you think? Are you going to do anything to your vanishing you point? Know, I think mm, I might leave it on this one just because mine is like really in the end of the paper and a lot of the lines went right to there. So yeah. I think I'm going to leave it there. 
All right, I might leave mine too. Okay, I am gonna start outlining now. And some of you may wanna outline every single thing with a ruler and that's fine. Um, it may take you a little longer, but if you want yours to look super, super neat, that is okay. Others, you may want to freehand. So I'm still going slow, but I'm outlining all my lines. And when you freehand something, it's nice to be able to see the hand of the artist, meaning you can see all the beautiful, tiny little imperfections. You know, my hand shakes sometimes. I don't know about you, Morgan. Yeah, definitely. There's certainly a time and a place to have all your lines really nice and straight, but if this isn't one for you, then that's fine. Personally, I'm just using my hand too. Yeah. I just like how it looks, you know? Because I can try to be perfect even with the ruler, and it's not. It never is. I think I found a line I forgot. Oop. So this star here, I forgot this line. So I'm going to take my ruler, line up my corner, line up my points. Hmm. And I found a line that maybe I messed up a little. <laughs> I can't tell. No, I think I decided to go with the line on the heart. See, this is what I'm saying. When you have a lot of lines, <laughs> it can be a little bit hard, a little bit of thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it gets very confusing. It's almost like exercising your brain, like a spatial exercise. Are you able to make sense of all of these lines that are just sort of at the bottom of your paper? It's also good for like real life situations too. My mom, she is an artist and she can look at, you know, a piece of wood and tell you exactly how long it is like within a couple of inches oh, because wow. she's done things like this so much. That's awesome. So, Dude, yeah. art can develop your real life skills. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> totally. My mom's the same way with um, photo sizes and framing. She can look at something and know if it's 12 by 16 or 5 by 7 because she used to work in a developing lab. That's super cool. Yeah. Comes in handy more often than you would think. <laughs> Especially if you're a decorator. Don't let anybody tell you that your art does not have value because it's teaching you real life lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of art actually is pretty closely related to math. Oh yeah, for sure. A lot of artists say that they actually enjoy math, even when it's hard because they don't give up, which is probably something they learn making art. See, I'm not one of those, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> I wasn't very good at math, but I did enjoy it. And I often wonder if that's why. I wonder... Yeah, I don't know. See, I was the opposite. I was good at math, but hated it. Oh. Oh. Yeah, I was neither. I, I struggled through my math classes. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> I recently got through my last college math class that I'll have to take for a while, so I might be done for now. Be jealous. <laughs> I haven't had a math class since 2007. Well, <laughs> never mind. Be jealous of other Nick. Other Nick? <laughs> Are we all still named Nick? Yes. Okay. Totally. We are going to change our Facebook names to Nick and confuse everyone. It would be even more confusing. We should set our pictures to each other. <laughs> Side Street will never know who is giving what presentation. Perfect. The plan is complete. <laughs> Gosh, maybe I'm a super villain. <gasps> maybe, yeah. Uh-oh. I just found two lines that I forgot. Two whole lines. All right, good thing I've got my ruler here. I was so sure that I was done and it looked good. Nope. And it's not hitting anything. Looks like I'm going all the way to the vanishing point.
You know, even when we have our pencil lines made really straight with the ruler, I'm noticing it's still hard to trace them straight. Yeah. Both because there's a lot going on there and straight lines are just kind of hard. Yeah. I feel like not all of my lines went straight to the vanishing point, but it still looks really cool. So we can, I mean, you can tell. <gasps> that is but... so cool. So, I love it. And it's not hard. Yours probably looks a lot like that at this point if you're following along. So that's awesome. Really? You'll know it's a cool drawing when you're all done if it looks like something is popping out at you. So even if one of your lines isn't quite right or if something's a little off, honestly, no one's going to know. No. I mean, it's going to look cool. It's going to come at you like 3D. And plus, once you add all the color, ooh, that's super awesome. Oh, yeah. Another challenge for those of you who may find this a little simple, if you, because if you've been doing one point perspective a while, this may be easy for you. If you want to try shading with colors to make it look, you know, dark on the bottom, because that's maybe where shadows are, and then light in the front, because that's where the lights are, I encourage you to try that. I would like to see that. That would be really cool. Yeah. Or like multi-tones inside of the letters too. Ooh. Like a gradient where it goes from one color to another. Mm -hmm. And you can even do that with the shadows. Just a lot of extra challenges you can throw in there. Oh yeah. I've really been loving art lately that has a lot of color in the shadows because real life is a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's something I'm missing in a lot of my own <laughs> personal art. So that's a challenge to myself. Oops. I know sometimes I meet artists whose artwork is all black and gray and charcoal and stormy and cloudy, but they're very super happy people. And I'm like, that is, that is awesome. <laughs> they're very exuberant people. It's super cool. And even in that art, like with the dark charcoal, you notice that there's a lot of values in mm -hmm. that. So. My point being, I like shadows in artwork right now. You can do cool <laughs> things with them. <laughs> well, this might be a really cool project for you then. Yeah, I think I'm done with my lines pretty much. So I might be moving into my color pretty soon here. Yeah, I think so. Ooh. Oh, that's so what cool. <laughs> I feel like there should be a sound effect, like it's Ooh. popping out of I you. like that. You guys should tell your parents what the sound effect for your superhero name is. Like, what comes up when that goes on the comic or in the screen? Yeah. Oh, color is always so much pressure. I don't know where to start. <laughs> now, next time one of your families or friends have a garage sale, they're going to be asking you to make their signs. Oh, this would be a super cool garage sale sign. I would totally stop. <laughs> Take all my money. I will buy everything. <laughs> I'm using crayons. I always feel like whenever I get the chance to use a good Crayola crayon, I will do it. I mm -hmm. love it. It's so nostalgic for me. They make like nice artist quality wax crayons and pastels and they just don't they're not the same <laughs> right i know of um of an artist he's on i don't remember his name but he's on youtube and he makes um native american portraits using only crayola crayons but they're hyper realistic huh. they are fascinating and i should one of us should find find his videos and post that because oh my goodness that is so cool yeah, it really doesn't matter what material you have. Mm -hmm. I, I've got some colored pencils here. Um, I don't know. I haven't used colored pencils in a while. These are from colored pencils. Crayons look cool, though. I like how soft they are. Um, here's my finished Nick. Ta-da! That is a sound effect. <laughs> um, you might want to erase some of your pencil lines. Like, I've got a lot of mistakes here that I can erase with an eraser now before I start coloring. Um, you don't have to, because like Morgan said, you might not even see your pencil lines once you start coloring. But I've got a lot of mistakes, so. 
if we're you're using a more translucent that. thing, you might want to erase them if you don't want to see them. Yeah. It just depends. If you're using crayon like me, you probably don't have to erase so hard because it'll cover it up. Don't you hate it when this happens when you're erasing in your corner? Oh no! <laughs> you're erasing in your corner, like folds in on itself. I decided to try my challenge with the gradients. I don't know, it's kind of going somewhere. Hey, I like that, yeah. I like that a lot, that's cool. All right, I know I'm not gonna finish coloring in this session. <laughs> It Probably takes not. a while, but that's okay. Sometimes you want to take your time when you're coloring something because you want to put a lot of effort into it. And then I've also seen people who like to rush and they just go scribble, scribble because they want to finish it as fast as they can because they think it's a race. Done. <laughs> How you color it is totally up to you and your own expression. Um, let's see, maybe I'll just do one star and then, and then we'll talk a little bit about this challenge and... Then I'm gonna let you guys finish these and yeah, post them. Yeah, Ooh, have your see. parents do it or have yourself do it. We would really love to see your art. I think that yeah. that's like, we should start getting that going for a lot of these sessions because mm -hmm. we would share it. You guys can see your art online, it'd be super cool. Yeah, I saw one, one student or one artist did a painting and they shared it online or on Facebook. And I was like, oh my god, that's better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> it was so pretty. And this artist did a couple. It was really cool. So please, go ahead, share them. We want to see them. Let's see. I got a red, a dark red. You know, something else you can do when you're coloring, if you want to make something just a little darker, you can add its opposite. You could add black if you want to add black to a color to make it a little darker, but if you don't want to add black to all your colors, you could add a tiny bit of green. Where'd my green go? Here's a green. Oh, it makes it still looks red, but it looks just a little darker now. That's a good idea. <laughs> so what do you think if we have like Oh, that's so cool. A space wow. like, I'll show her in a second, but in the middle of this A. What would you do? Would you leave that blank or would you color oh, that in? I had that question too, and it's kind of tricky. I colored, let's see, I colored mine in because I thought it was the bottom of that going across piece. Oh, yeah. You can kind of see that perspective. Let's see. I think I'll color mine in too. It looks a little bit funny blank. Yeah, totally up to you. You could, if you think it looks better white, you can leave it white. I think I have, I have a mess up here on my end. I have this extra line going down to my vanishing point. It's just this white shape. I was like, oh, <laughs> probably shouldn't have been there, but it's there. I left it white because I thought, I think it looks better white. So totally up to you. You guys are the artists, so you get to decide how you want to finish your work. All right, I think that is as far as I will get with Nick's. Nick, you can take this home and color it. <laughs> It'll be a collaboration. I like it. Ooh. If you've got younger siblings too, this is actually a great idea of like, you can make coloring sheets for them and oh, have them color yeah. in the letters. Mm -hmm. They would love it, filling in their own name, I bet. And they would think you're super awesome. Like, how did they do that? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, now our challenge with this two-point perspective if you think you can do it, I want to see it, and I'll give you a hint. I used two vanishing points. I had one over here, and I had one over here. I had to use an extra sheet of paper, and I made a dot on that sheet of paper. You can also freehand it, okay? I admit that I freehanded this side, the orange side. Um, but I'll leave this as a challenge, and we'll yeah. see if anyone is up for the challenge. I bet you can figure it out. It'll be really cool. Yeah. All right. We will see you guys next week. Do we know what's, what's next Tuesday? I don't, actually, because <laughs> we're into the new month, so new, that's I have right. no idea. Well, we will see you regardless next Tuesday.